Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we're talking about droids delivering you the goods, coin in your pocket, and we find out if Darth Vader is going to be a jagoff on Instagram. All that and more. Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said there. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Awesome Cast 178 live here from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg, ready to uh, talk geek, talk awesome things with you uh, for the next hour or so. Uh, we got a new lineup this week. Chili's taking a couple weeks off. He got some other things to do, other awesome things to do, I'm sure. Uh, so in the meantime, we have, first of all, first of all, returning to the show, uh, again, we like to represent the flyover states, but once in a while we have to represent the big city of, of, of New York City. Uh, from the Bronx, Mad Mike, Matt, Mike Rorson, of course, he's, uh, fits right in with the geekery here. He's uh, a, a, by trade and by, by habit, right? Um, I think my Tardis salt shaker pretty much defines yeah, that's it. That's my it. level of geek. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> also joining us, it's good Jagoff, John Chamberlain. He's been on the show a long time ago. It's good to have you back. Yeah, I'm a few pounds heavier and a few hairs lighter, but uh, but I'm glad to be back. I'm, I'm sure I am too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me like, what's going on. We like, well, when I'm not running into you in the haunted house, uh, as, yeah. as we 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 stumbled upon each other at the scare house when we were both going down there uh, to do a little bit of press stuff. Uh, this, the, the thing you saw here before uh, on this show, uh, uh, what's a uh, Jag off been, uh, been up to lately? Well, you know, I got, uh, we're still posting people that are embarrassing Pittsburgh and uh, still, you know, whether it's a stupid criminal or a stupid politician or whether that's redundant or not, I'm not sure, but, uh, and still having fun with it. And, Today we faked the post with, uh, you know, uh, George Trump or uh, Donald Trump. But we, one thing we added is every Wednesday we do an interview, a video episode, about five or six minutes called Yakking with You, Jagoff, where I get a chance to meet some interesting Pittsburghers, mm -hmm. people that uh, Pittsburghers that people see but don't necessarily know. For instance, the sax man outside of the Steeler games and Penguin games. Everybody gives them money to either play the sax or stop playing the sax as it might be but um and so we went and interviewed him so every wednesday on the on the site we do a yakking with you jag off and that's been a lot of fun i've got to meet a lot of interesting people and go to a lot of interesting businesses in the pittsburgh area so that's really been the coolest thing so far awesome. but we're still posting jag offs every monday through friday <laughs> what, what, what's uh what's the uh, the coolest uh, jag off that you've been yakking with Wow, that's a that's a hard one actually because um, if you go to Pittsburgh sports venues, everybody or concert venues, you know TC, the whistling beer vendor that always has this unique dance and whatever. Got to meet him, and that was a lot of fun. And and one of my favorite bakeries, the Oakmont Bakery, we went there, and um, and he uh, and we got to make my favorite cake, the Oakmonter cake, and they showed us how to make it, and then we got to eat lots of chocolate after that. Mm. So. Those were pretty cool. The Gateway Clipper was fun. We got to almost drive the boat, that kind of stuff. So I mean, it's, it's really been a lot of fun, even places like Wiggle Whiskey, where we got to sample the whiskey while we were in there. Good stuff. You know, this job doesn't pay, but it sure does have its fringe benefits, I'd say. <laughs> That's what and I know. I know for me doing Unsung these last couple of years, it's been really cool to have a project like this that gets you around town. Right. Like yeah. I, know, I know for me, I've seen I've seen parts of town and, and stuff around town and met, met people around uh, that I definitely wouldn't have had the opportunity to otherwise. Um, yeah, is that, that seems like it's kind of the same thing with with uh, your series here. Absolutely. And one of the coolest ones was Captain Wild Bill from the Deadliest Catch show. Nice. Uh, he's a Pittsburgher and I uh, got to interview him, went down to the Just Decky tours and interviewed him while he was in town for a benefit. So it's kind of cool because people are interested in being on it which helps the blog, which also helps the, the broadness and, you know, kind of deters anybody that's maybe concerned about the name and the name is not a swear word, but you know, some people still have a negative connotation to it. So it helps when family places like the Oak, Oakmont Bakery and Gateway Clipper and Just Decky Tours get on it and, and uh, we have some fun. 
Awesome. So we'll uh, go through our news here and see if we can find any jagoffs in the tech industry here. All right. There you go. <laughs> Mostly, I'm that because uh, <laughs> I'm a I'm a technical idiot. So uh, so I'm I'm probably that the technical jagoff. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> um, like I said, this is the awesome cast again, where we uh, talk about tech, we talk about social media, we try to talk about the positive, about the awesome things that we find out there. Uh, of course, you can find us. We're here every uh, Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com at about six thirty. 30 p.m. Eastern. You can join us in the chat room. You can also follow us. We're on Twitter at AwesomeCast. Uh, we're over on YouTube, of course. You can see all the video versions of this phone. Or of this, yeah, you can view, view it on your phone too. That that works too. Um, but uh, uh, you can also check us out on Facebook, on Google Plus. A lot of great conversation there. We're putting a lot of questions out, and uh, we're getting some responses, and we'll hopefully get to some of them here uh, in the show. Uh, so let's get down with it uh, uh, with our awesome thing of the week, guys. Let's start off with the big one. I know everybody's been talking about this. My awesome thing is easily the the Amazon Prime Air drone system. That got featured apparently on 60 Minutes. Apparently they surprised Charlie Rose with this thing. I'll get some footage up in a second for you guys on video. Have you guys seen this thing? I, how can you miss it at this point? <laughs> it is. Uh, I look at it as a future Jagoff catching machine for sure. Buzzing around <laughs> Pittsburgh catching people from all angles. Yeah, certainly. Wow. Well, what about you, Mike? The, the, the first thing I want to do when this comes out is I want to order Star Wars action figures and then when it shows up, just say these weren't the droids I was looking for. So <laughs> that's the first thing I wanted to do. <laughs> so the idea is, a, you see on the video, they're in a shipping center. They put in this little protective box. It goes down It goes down the conveyor belt. Uh, gets loaded onto a drone. The drone apparently can go about 10 miles. will deliver within a half an hour. Um, of, you know, 10 miles of a shipping center. So I'm wondering, like, you know, how that's going to work. It's definitely going to be a very geographically uh, a limiting feature. Uh, it's going to be great for me. It's going to be great. Well, you're in New York City. You get everything, right? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but but they said this uh, could take. I think they said four to five years. Uh, some some stuff I've been listening to says this probably won't actually happen until 2020, if it should happen. Because I think the well, one you got to get by the FAA, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and the FAA, uh, uh, I think they were saying, uh, aren't planning to approve something like this until about 2020. So it's going to be down the line, but to see that if they're showing this off, uh, I think that they see the USPS or UPS, I, I, I can't get the letters straight on those ones. Uh, one of them is looking into something like this with drones too. Probably UPS. Probably UPS. Yeah, I would venture to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not the government run one, right? But the government's already got the drones. <laughs> They've already yeah, but their packages are aren't really handled with care. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. So, I mean, would you guys see? I mean, we already have um, in certain areas they're they're having kind of a door delivery same day. Uh, uh, you know, especially like in San Francisco with services like Amazon. I think Walmart's looking to do something similar. Um, is, is this? Uh, could you imagine a day where we're sitting here in Pittsburgh or New York City and we're seeing a bunch of drones just you know delivering our toilet paper for us? <laughs> you know, I think it. Uh, get, you know, I, I think it br brings some interesting. And you know, every solution comes with its own situation of of problems. You know, what happens when there are four or five of them running around and clogging the airspace when a medical helicopter has cut through or, you know, these kind of things. I, I think, um, I think it's a fantastic, uh, I think it's great. There won't be UPS drivers. There'll be drone drivers in the future sitting around in brown shorts with controllers. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, you know, I think it certainly has to be, has to have some think through on it, but man, I would love to be the first one who receives a package. There's no question. Definitely. What about you, Mike? I mean, especially in some places, some places that's already congested on the roadways as New York City. It, it kind of reminds me of the Hunger Games, actually, because like I was just saw the movie this past weekend. They have like you can receive packages while you're in the dome, and they arrive via tiny little helicopter. So it kind of scares me that we're on so, our way to that. So this is where that's coming from. Yeah, you know there was a comment. There was a comment, and you'll probably appreciate this, Mike. Uh, when I was listening, I think Mac break. They said they said they're you know that idea. Imagine when like like all these are up in the air, and they're like, oh, it looks like Coruscant. Maybe that's what's <laughs> actually going on in Star Wars. Is all those little th things are just like Amazon deliveries of the future, right? <laughs> That'd be great if like 
Misa expecting parcel from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's the advertising campaign right off the bat. They're set for this. Because you got to think, maybe like the second or third Star Wars movie will be on its way out of this new batch of them. And why not? Why not, right? I... I don't want to jump in there. There's already an interesting thing they're doing with this Star Wars. You know uh, what? Campaign. If it if it coincides with the release of one of the movies on DVD, George Lucas or Disney or whoever should offer free shipping for anyone who gets Star Wars delivered to them via droid. <laughs> there you go. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, which one of you guys want to? Uh, Mike, what, what's your awesome thing this week? I know you you've been to the movies lately. I I've seen three movies in the past three days nice um and frozen i saw on sunday Mm -hmm. and frozen was a good movie but what really blew my mind was the animated short before it it's called get a horse and it starts off like a 1940s mickey mouse cartoon and then it pops out in 3d into like colorized mickey mouse there's a character wearing a Captain America shirt. It's just fantastic. It's got Peg Leg Pete. It's got Minnie Mouse. It's got um, uh, Clarabelle Cow and Horace Horse Collar. I believe that those are the names of the two cows in the old Mickey Mouse cartoons. And the voice of Mickey Mouse is Walt Disney. Oh wow! Wow, Walt Disney. So this is like a resurrection of an of an actual old. Cartoon. Yeah, I think they just like took dub lines from all the Mickey Mouse cartoons he did and just I mean Mickey doesn't say much obviously. He he says like, Hey Minnie you know, he just says stuff like that. But it like it was seamless. It was absolutely seamless and it worked so well for like as a teaser to Frozen. Like mm-hmm. I just want to see a whole movie like that. That'd be awesome. Now was this did you watch the movie in three D? I sadly did not because the times didn't work out, yeah. but I would almost go back to see it again just to see that short in 3D. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about that. You know, I, I'm really, I really, it is kind of another show's kind of kind of talk, but uh, I'm really kind of astonished at how well Disney has been doing lately. Like before, it would always like, okay, Pixar are the really, 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 really good movies, and then you'd have Disney kind of has, ugh, really, you know, like everything kind of became. Um, I don't know because it was like factory production of the animated, sh- you know, films or what, um, but it really feels like the stuff that I liked about Pixar seems to be filtering back through. Like, Wreck-It Ralph was really good. It sounds like Frozen was really good uh, from, from what, what you've been saying. Um, like, you can kind of see the whole Pixar influence is, is bringing kind of the Disney magic back to it, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I think it also helps that they have so many umbrellas that they, like, they're the ones who did the Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. They realize that a universe where that's aware of itself is really the best way to go, especially in this kind of culture where people look for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a theory online that all of the Pixar movies are within the same universe. And that, like, one of the characters from Tangled is actually a time traveling witch from a different movie or whatever. But there's, like, a whole unified theory of Pixar. And I think they kind of take that and they realize. We can have some fun with this because we're Disney. Even if it flops, we're still going to make a boatload of money off. Yeah, and Disney kind of did that previously with all of its cartoon properties, I felt. Like, you know, back when it was still, you know, Mickey and Donald and even up through maybe DuckTales a little bit, right? Well, yeah, I I would say so. But once they started doing the movies, Mm -hmm. the movies never really overlap unless you go to the actual theme parks. Yeah. Because I went uh, this past... April, and we saw the the um, finale show at MGM Studios or Hollywood Studios, and it's like Mickey Mouse fighting off Maleficent and Jafar. <laughs> it's awesome. It's there like was, a mega mashup of all Disney villains. I'm trying to pull something up here I saw earlier today on Google+. Plus. Have you seen these uh, Disney mashup uh, uh, Star Wars action figures? There was a Darth Goofy I saw, and I just saw it like briefly on my on my feed today. I'm sure I've seen something somewhere because they had, like 
They have a whole bunch of them because they have star tours in Hollywood Studios. Now, it, it, uh, clear this up for me because I'm pretty sure because so we were, we've been saying about how there's commercials for it uh, for Star Wars on, at Disney now and how wow that was quick. They actually had Star Wars there before they bought them. They've had Star Wars there for years. Yeah. This is nothing new. I mean, they've had a lot of properties there that they don't own. Indiana Jones was there for the longest time. Um, geez, what else? Uh, Indiana Jones is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Because when they did the MGM, that, that brought in a lot of different properties that weren't specifically J Disney. Uh, Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Yeah. Power. yeah. So, awesome. What about you, Mike, do you Mike, uh, Mike in Brooklyn there. I, do you see this as Disney's – or Mike and Mike – do you see the Disney movies coming out to be better because they have to sort of reinvigorate the theme parks now? The theme parks were always based on the movies. There's, and now that the movies are old, they have to sort of make new movies so they can upgrade the theme parks. Is that what's happening here uh, with the yeah, franchise? Yes. Um, there's a couple things happen there. And actually, um, there was a good story about this. And I think this is one I read from the Steve Jobs book. Um, Disney, you know, Disney like saw the writing on the wall when... They saw all the characters in their in their uh, in their theme parks were all the Pixar characters, and not any of the ones that Disney were coming up with, as far as any of the newer ones. Uh, so then you had you know a few years ago Pixar was bought by Disney and then uh, integrated into Disney to the point where uh, John Lasseter, that was the head of Pixar, now basically the people that were in charge of Pixar became in charge of Disney, including Steve Jobs at the time, actually. Um, so now the things that made top-down Pixar work seem to be making, uh, infusing Disney top-down with that Pixar mentality. I mean, they're not always working. Planes didn't really get over too well over the summer, but stuff like Frozen, stuff like Wreck-It Ralph, and Wreck-It Ralph, I think, has that kind of, that, that inside joke mentality as far as video games go, you know, like you're liking with the cow with the, you know, Captain America shirt in this, sh in this, in this show. Um, so I think, I think, yeah, they got scared. They got, they got scared for a while because they, because you got to think everything they do is to infuse the theme parks and more stuff to sell. Because right. it's it's a it's the probably the biggest marketing machine out there, and and, and they've been really really smart. Um, yes, they bought Marvel, and 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 I always have problems. You know, nothing against how you said it, Mike, but but I always have a problem with saying, well, Disney did the Avengers movie. It's like, no, Marvel Studios was doing the Avengers movie. Disney just happened to buy them at the right time to benefit from them, right? But Disney Disney was the marketing machine behind the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. When it came out, definitely they it was it was their marketing team at that time. Um, it's really interesting. I, there was a, a breakdown of looking at the posters and, and how they related to a lot of other, I think, Disney movie posters, for instance. Like, you can kind of mm -hmm. tell the influence is all there. Um, I mean, the same with Star Wars. Like, they're, they're leaving, they're leaving the Star Wars happen over here, you know. Um, but you gotta think how many properties Disney owns, and they're all kind of segment. ESPN's a Disney property, for instance. You know, you think, you think some head at, at, at you know, at Disney is really kind of telling ESPN what to do, you know. Um, they're successful. They own them. And they'll cross them over whenever it makes sense, like, you know, ABC or something. Um, but they mostly let them be their own entities. I hope they make a Kingdom Hearts game with Star Wars and Marvel incorporated into it. Wouldn't it be cool? They got that Disney Infinity game. What if they start, like, you know, swinging in Spider-Man every once in a while or something? Oh, if they you do know? that, I'll be forced to buy that game, and I really don't want to buy that game. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's <laughs> everywhere, man. Um, awesome. Awesome. Uh, John, wait, what do you got here? Well, I, uh, you know, I first of all, what I just really, I know it doesn't fit into the show, but what was awesome, I, you know, is that all the people who had to work on Thanksgiving, firefighters, police officers, retail workers, all those people, that's awesome that those people work so that we can all enjoy our Thanksgiving dinners. But really what I found awesome for this show was um, I'm really tuned into this thing called coin. And it's a, uh, for me, it's, it's like a godsend because it's all the credit cards you have all scanned into one credit card and you carry that in your wallet or a debit card as well. And uh, the kicker for it is, is that, uh, is that while all the credit cards are on there, for me, the worst possible thing would be that I lose that one credit card. <laughs> However, there is a, a part of it that gives you a tone on your smartphone when you walk, when it gets too far away from you. So if you've left it behind oh, wow. somewhere, you know about it. And for me, 
that's the godsend part of it because I lose my keys, I lose my key TV remote, I lose I lose everything, and uh, so the I like it because it's nice and efficient. I like how you dial up how you how you use each individual credit card. I like the fact you know when it's lost. But um, although the other thing is, I think those kinds of things are cool, and I'm not as technology savvy as I should be, so I'm usually not an early adopter and look cool like these three guys. Uh, I'm not an early adopter. I uh, I sort of sit and wait and see what what people come up with as far as their foibles. Um, and uh, but I'm really into I'm interested in it and I'm keeping my eye on. It. I thought it was pretty awesome. You know, and this is there's been a lot of discussion about this over the last week because I think you can pre-order it now for I want to say a hundred dollars. Yes. Does that sound about right? Um, yes. And, and and like the idea of security first, who is Coin that you're trusting with them with? basically all your vital bank information at that point like here have all my credit card numbers and the cvc on the back and everything right um and then and then the fact like you know you walk into i walk into sheets and and scan this card and they notice it's not a credit card or i hand it over to get scanned if it's if if it's a place that does that or say you know a restaurant or something right isn't that going to be a little questionable at this point um I don't know. It, it, I, I think there's a, a little bit of a behavioral issue there. And again, the trust. I do like the idea of, I didn't know about the thing where if it gets too far away from the phone, it beeps. Yeah. That would make you feel yeah. a little safer, you know, walking through the city where you could get pit pocket, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, that, that's really cool. Yeah. I, I, I think, the, you know, the adoption is, remember, and you know, I'm old enough to remember when we used cash and note and and it was scary to go to a debit card for every one of your mm-hmm. transactions. Personally, mm-hmm. I love that. I hate people that use cash anymore. But, you know, it's just I think it's just as scary and and weird. It, it'll be just as scary and weird as that, that, the, you know, when you hand that thing over and people don't. I also love the fact that it's black because isn't there some high end American Express card that's black that if you if you're like a. You know, uh, a high-end user, you get a black American Express card. I love that fact. So I don't know if that's a play on anything, but I, I thought, <laughs> thought that was interesting. But again, I guess I guess how many times do you uh, slide that thing and they don't even look? It could be anything. I, exactly. Now, this is yeah. what I got. I thought this was confused as before because there was somebody doing, I think it was a Kickstarter at the time, where um, I don't know if they had a device or it was in your phone. Uh, but you could hold your thing up to the card slider. Like, you don't slide anything. You just hold it up to it. It emits some kind of, I don't know, something um, and, and, and reads it. And, and again, it, like, it has your cards like in software and everything, so it knows, knows all that stuff and deducts from whichever one you choose. Um, but the, yeah, this is more interesting. I didn't, I didn't notice that this was an, an actual physical card uh, whenever I yeah. know I'm talking about yeah. it. So Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's 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 cool. You know, it's just amazing how fast it all goes. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, yeah, it, it's incredible. I know when I lose my debit card, I usually find it within seconds of me admitting that I've lost it. So uh, <laughs> this one, I would never have to admit that I lost it. It would just beep on my phone. What about you, Mike? How, how do you see something like this going? I, I mean, I don't have multiple cards, mm-hmm. so I mean, it's not really geared toward me, but. I I would be nervous about like giving all my information to someone like you were saying before like especially I mean it, it's great that it beeps if it's too far away from a phone but what if you're not carrying your phone on you I think the like, presu- you, I, I think the presumption is that you always are yeah, I, I mean, not, not I know a lot of people don't carry their phones on them all the time or don't have their phones on because. You know, they're like if if my credit card suddenly becomes linked to my phone, mm-hmm. I don't know that might that seems like it'd be a bit weird. I, I mean, because I'm thinking about living in the city. You know, if if someone pickpockets me, I'm not gonna be able to hear that beat. Yeah. Regardless of you know, unless unless it's like five yards away. You're not going to be able to hear it, even you still won't know. So I don't really know if that's much of a security measure, unless like deactivates the access to the accounts or something like that. If that's a safety feature that's involved, that's not a bad idea because no. then someone can take it and 
if they're far away from you, they can't use it at all. That'd be actually pretty good. There's, a, I mean, that technology exists. There's, there's, there's stuff. With, I, I think we mentioned on the show, like something like the Moto X. You can get this, you get this little fob. You just kind of clip on yourself, and and instead of you unlocking your phone every time, if it knows it's near that fob, which means it should be near you, it will just automatically be unlocked. This whole kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, distance thing, uh, it could really work if they build it into it. And it, that'd be great if it just, like, killed killed the card if it walks away from you. So you're not actually losing that. Yeah, I guess yeah, you have that, that same that technology in a car key now, right? The car key works as long as the key is within, the car will turn on as long as the key is within a certain distance of the car, right? Same mm -hmm. Same technology, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, this also reminds me of, um, have you guys seen, I can't remember the name of it, but I, always, I see them advertising even though they're not coming out until February, but there's these little fobs you can get for 20 bucks, and they have like a GPS on them, I guess, and you just put them on your keys or other things. Like, like I was looking at the commercial, and I was like, wow, this is a really good idea that I could put this on like all of my video equipment. So next time I leave a uh, tripod in Detroit, I'll know exactly where it is, right? Um, and then, you know, it all pulls up on, like, an iPhone app or something. So, um, I this this location-aware idea is, is is getting pretty interesting. Um, awesome. So, it, so, so you're, you're holding off a coin. Mike, are you, are you holding off on coin? Wait and see. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm holding off. <laughs> if, I, if I'm that far away from my debit card, I've got... You know, more things to be concerned about. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ah, here it takes gift cards, too. That would be handy. I got a lot of those things. Here, take my sheets card, you know. Um, <laughs> awesome. So, uh, my I like concern would also be is how it holds up during laundry. Yes, because you I'm know sorry? it's going to get left in there. I, I, how many times have you washed your debit card in your wallet? I would be concerned about that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, we had some interactions this week. I, I, you know, I like to throw the questions out there on the Twitter. Um, so I, I threw one. I, hopefully we can have a good discussion about uh, uh, the state of Netflix. First of all, uh, uh, Mike, you're on Netflix, right? Yes, I am. And uh, uh, John, are you? I am not, no. You are not. You're not. Uh, so, uh, so still. Um, so uh, one article that came up uh, uh, today was Netflix is actually, you know, we know they've been doing original content and everything. And uh, one of the recent movies, Turbo, actually is getting a series on there. DreamWorks actually got signed up with a deal. They're going to get a lot of, uh, of their properties as, as uh, series cartoons on Netflix, including like, stuff like Shrek, I know. Um, and, of course, this, this Turbo. Uh, apparently they're, they're releasing it. Um, the, the story part of it is is apparently they're releasing like four or five episodes around Christmas Eve and not the entire series like they have everything else uh, all at once. So I, I kind of spun that and said, you know, you know, with this, you know, them getting original content like for kids, um, you know, if anybody sees like their kids getting, you know, using Netflix more than anything else. Right. Instead of like, you know, them just watching Nickelodeon all day or something like that. Um, I did get a little bit of response uh, uh, from Funky Dong, who's always uh, pretty good responding to the show. Uh, he says they, they only have basic granny cable, so they watch nearly everything new through Netflix, including lots of children's shows. Um, their only complaint was the availability. And, and Mike, we talked about it a little bit before the show. I, I know like one, well, they got a ton of cartoons on there. I love that. I love the idea that, you know, you could boot up a Netflix and, and there's a, a children's area. I'd often go through there and find cartoons for myself. Um, but that there is that safe zone where you can put them in there and keep them away from the, you know, uh, 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 you know zombie movies and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, Mike, we're talking about the Cartoon Network stuff seems to be uh, typically pretty locked down. Yeah, I mean... I wonder if there's an issue with the parent companies mm -hmm. because I know. Oh, that hey, Mike, like, we're doing that. that, that oh, it has gone. Oh no! I was, there's something like The Simpsons. Yeah. Is it on Netflix? And Lord knows they have plenty of seasons they could release on Netflix. Yeah. I think, you know, but I mean, I, don't know, I, I like the I like the availability of Netflix, but I wish they would have like a release. Mm -hmm. Like especially for shows that are already on there, because I've been waiting for season seven of Doctor Who months. Yeah, and, and 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 I always look at Netflix as being the kind of third rung down. Like everything, like I think everything comes on 
you know, they'll get maybe the Hulu first and then, you know, maybe eventually after a year they'll get there. I, I never expect new content on there. And I'm always surprised when I do see something that was like, seems like it was out so recently, you know, like Red Dawn's on there. And that seems like, well, really, that was only out a year ago. You know, that always mm. kind of surprises me. Uh, or Judge Dredd came on there and, and Amazon Prime as well. Um, John, I, 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 do, do you do any of the online watching or are you mostly kind of old school cable? Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, the online, my kids do the online. They both have Netflix, uh, accounts. And, uh, I love that. I, you know, to me, it's the same thing that we are watching. However, I look at it this way. I watch how no, a regular TV went to cable and cable had to come up with really original content, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere, you know, that, that kind of caught somebody's eye. And the next thing you know, everybody started watching a uh, certain cable channel, whether uh, I can't remember, you know, I'm, uh, you know, Duck Dynasty is certainly one, and Deadliest Catch <laughs> is certainly one. You know, people started watching the Food Channel to get away from the normal shows, so they started getting into cable, and that's what I think is going to be what helps to grow the Netflix community is when they start producing regular good shows. And I don't even necessarily know that they need an anchor star; they just need a good hook at this point mm -hmm. to pull people in and get over the fact. I think the technology factor is really there's there's no hurdle there because most people even in their 60s are used to getting on and watching the video i think it becomes a budgetary thing at this point of if i'm already paying for cable why would i pay for netflix so i've got to displace one probably netflix is going to have to displace cable in my home budget for me to make that commitment and in order for me to make that commitment i need to make sure that i can watch some really cool things and once I become if, so, whenever Netflix comes up with the next Duck Dynasty or Ice Ice Drivers or what Ice Truckers or whatever, <laughs> they're going to have the hook, and and they you know, I think you'll see the tipping point. I think that's what, so sort of to me what makes sense. And I think you know, you know I've, I've said on here, I, I'm a cord cutter. I have Hulu, Netflix, and that's like the primary of what I watch, uh, not including all the. Uh, you know, all of the uh, uh, podcasts that I listen through throughout the day. Um, and, and I'm finding myself really enjoying, like, again, the Netflix originals are, are really interesting. I, I enjoyed Orange is the New Black and, and uh, House of Cards. Uh, but, but Hulu's really caught me. Now, they call a lot of stuff on Hulu uh, originals, but really it's kind of just imported from other country kind of stuff. Like, really enjoying stuff like Misfits and uh, The Wrong Guys just came on there. Uh, Spy's another good one. Um so, but but the actual actual originals like the Awesomes is, is from uh, Seth Meyers from Saturday Night Live, on there. Um, uh, Behind the Mask is a reality series about mascots. I've been really mm -hmm. enjoying lately. But it feels like like hey, there's the next, there is your next Duck Dynasty. You know, uh, it feels like like oh, they're making a reality show out of anything, and now they have a new home. You know, um, and, yeah. and, and, and you've yeah. seen that grow. It seems like there's a there's a there's a new original series on Hulu, especially. I feel I feel like and nobody talks about this. I feel like Hulu is pushing the original series idea more than you know anybody else aside from an HBO. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. And and it's it's funny that uh, you know what I think what's pulled people into Hulu was just simply having some clips from the regular shows mm -hmm. and then linking into Hulu. Uh, you know. I, uh, so, and for some reason, again, in, in a certain demographic, they haven't hit, they haven't hit that tipping point for the global demographic of, you know, the majority of people, I think they've hit a certain segment and I'm not, I'm not sure why just yet, but, uh, yeah. the, um, yeah, but I think the original content there is good. I, the mascot show I'm familiar with and, um, yeah, it's just, I, I'm not sure why that hasn't quite hit the tipping point yet, other than the market space being crowded at this point mm -hmm. oh definitely I, I think it's working its way out between that and now you have amazon you know doing their own original content that i happen to have access to because i buy amazon prime shipping because i want stuff in two days i guess um so i don't you have like at least three different platforms here with three very very different uh ways of going about things and they're they're still competing with now you have comcast with xfinity and these other services with similar things that are mimicking what hulu does and hey here's all the stuff and here's the back episodes and everything um so I, I i just think it's fascinating how many sources i get the same stuff i'm amazed at what movies are sometimes available across all three things that i pay for <laughs> but i think you're always going to have overlap but i pay for the things that are different 
in the locker room. Yeah, and, and, and I think that um, just one other thing is that in one of your previous shows, you talked about the, the helps, the help outs on Google, you know. Mm-hmm. Right now on the Comcast, you can go to On Demand and learn how to play guitar <laughs> or learn how to cook spaghetti. Now, you know, for free or for 10 bucks, I can go to get a Google help out. So, again, the same things are being presented in different ways. It's just a matter. It's the it's the VHS beta. It's just a matter of which one's going to hit the tip on, tipping who's, point first with the with the overall demographic. Who's providing them and who's going to rise over the top over the next few years, I guess, right? Um, That's it. I think there's still, I think there's still like, like, I have HBO on my cable box. Yeah. And I remember when I was down in I want to watch but first of all, that's what I was saying, HBO. So I was able to put HBO Go on my iPad. Watch five streams. Sorry. All right, and as we uh, work on that tech a little bit here, um, I wanted to take a moment and talk about something. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, something really cool we're having an opportunity to do. Uh, and if you're not in the Pittsburgh area, you will definitely be able to watch it afterwards, uh, at least portions of it. We're, we're, we're figuring out the logistics of this one. Uh, but of course, you know, of course, one of the show, one of the cornerstones, what we do here is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, which will be celebrating its eight year anniversary here at, in January and also its 400th episode in two weeks. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going down just up the street here. Oh, there's Mike uh, coming at us from his iPad now, uh, representing the mayhem, of course. Uh, right up the road here at the Hollywood Theater in Dormont, we're going to have a Wrestling Mayhem Show fan appreciation night. So come on down. It's free of charge, although please support the Hollywood. They are a nonprofit. They are uh, looking to uh, raise some money for a new cool digital projector so they can keep bringing uh, some cool stuff like Rocky Horror Picture Show. And, of course, his concession stand will be open and all that kinds of stuff. But we're going to be showing that classic Hulk Hogan masterpiece, No Holds Barred from the 80s. Yes, I believe everything that I just said to myself. Um, But, of course, our friends, uh, they've been on the show here, Bobby F. J-Town, DJ Lunchbox. uh, They're going to be lampooning it uh, live on stage with with us um, for that movie. And, of course, we're going to film our 400th episode there that night. So come out and join us at 7 p.m. Tuesday, December 17th, two weeks from tonight from this recording. Um, And that'll be our big kind of christmas bash we're gonna see how it goes maybe we'll do some more of these maybe we'll do is uh make it a once a year thing or something so uh all you guys come down check it out it's going to be a blast even if you've never seen this movie expect bad things and expect to laugh uh so we appreciate if you guys check out um we uh, of course have if you want to so we can kind of get an idea of what uh, who all is coming we do have an event up if you go to the wrestling mayhem shows uh facebook page we do have an event their WMS fan appreciation night, and of course, we'll be tweeting that out as well uh, via the awesome cast. So, we'll do that here real quick. So, let's get back into it, guys. Um, what else do we have lined up here? We have uh, well, we talked about Amazon. So, you mentioned we went to Star Wars before, you know, started they started an Instagram account. <laughs> you seen this yet? No. Yep, and apparently, whoop, I hit the wrong one. It, well, the, the other Instagram one, it was it was the biggest. Um, who who Instagrammed their turkey this year? Like Twice. I did, raising the hand. <laughs> on an I, I, I got two different turkeys. <laughs> but I mean, I noticed that last year it was like your your Instagram feed just becomes a t- giant turkey wall, right? <laughs> and, and, and it made me really hungry. <laughs> exactly um but you gotta think that's like that that seems like the the perfect thing that's when most families get together i think uh is thanksgiving because uh, no other kind of uh extracurricular distractions i think and everybody gets together and everybody's making a turkey everybody's making a turkey it's the visual sign uh of a universal sign of thanksgiving in the states um what, what do you th- what do you guys think about that you 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 think um is, is that kind of show the power of instagram at this point I, I think it just shows that people like to show off, you know, their hard work or their <laughs> parents' hard work. <laughs> I'm because it, it takes a while to roast a turkey. No, I, I think it's, you know, just every, everybody wants to be uh, famous and cool. And, yeah, it, it show off is a great word, Mike. Uh, it's just everybody wants to be proud and be heard. And it's just a, another another way to do that. 
I'm surprised at the, at, you know, how many people were on Instagram doing that. And that seems that Instagram seems to be taking over Pinterest, right? Would, would you say? Uh, yeah, but I feel like well, I, I think they had a head start to Pinterest. And I think Pinterest, Pinterest is more, I mean, I think it has more of a niche, especially with the ladies. Mm -hmm. And Pinterest is more proactive. Like you actually have to go out and search stuff on Pinterest. Yeah. Instagram, you just take a picture, pop a filter, boom, it's out in the world. Yeah, because it used to be, yeah. before we had all these tools and our features, you know, built into Twitter, built into our phones. Uh, now, it used to be Twitter, Instagram was the easiest way for me to say, hey, I just want to share this picture in a visual way. And it created its own uh, social network. You know, there's there's its own community there. Um, I'll, I'll put something on Instagram and get certain reactions, you know, rather than, you know, you know, maybe more reactions than what I get on on Twitter or Facebook, you know. Um, it, it, there's something interesting happening there. Um, last year, for, they're saying last year the, the network saw over 10 million photos on Thanksgiving in a rate of about 200 images per second. Wow. wow. Yep, and they beat that this year. Well, somebody else getting in the Instagram, like I was starting to say, um, they started in a Star Wars Instagram account with uh, Darth Vader uh, giving a selfie. <laughs> that sounds about right. Even though episode, <laughs> even though episode, what, what were we up six, seven is uh, two years away, they went ahead and got started with it. Uh, so <laughs> I don't. I always, I'm always curious about like brands getting into Instagram like this. And so we'll see if we can pull up the page here and see if they're doing anything else with it. Um, what, like I know, I know, um, Mike, I know you and I, we've seen a really interesting one where a pro wrestler actually does. A, uh, a false count anywhere championship via Instagram <laughs> video. Uh, that's been really interesting. Um, yes. But have you, do you really follow like any brands that that keep things interesting? I have a feeling. I hope. I hope the Star Wars does stuff interesting because we got we got our selfie, but then we just kind of got some generic Star Wars pics, except for all the uh, middle bikini babes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Lovely Lay is from uh, uh, San Diego Comic Con 2010. So they're just like digging through the uh, the picture pile at this point, aren't they? I hope they start releasing like viral things for the next Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. And nope. like you have to actually pay attention, but they'll suddenly release like, "Hey, here's a picture of Han and Leia's kid," or something like that. Well, no, it's J.J. Abrams. I wouldn't be surprised because he's he yeah. But his, all of his Instagram pictures. Unless Instagram comes up with a lens flare filter, you're probably not going to see many from him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like this in that it bridges the gap, I think. It's interesting is that if you're a person who was around for the first round of Star Wars movies, you're probably just adopting Instagram where your kids have been on Instagram. And so now you're bridging that gap into the legacy of the, of the franchise. Uh, it's now common ground for a kid and a, and a parent maybe to talk about Star Wars at this point. I, I think it's kind of interesting. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's in. I, I know. I, would you, you guys? Oh, my question before: Do you guys follow anything uh, that's an interesting brand? Like, I know I, I I follow one that's like Eight Bit Apparel, and they keep like you know showing pictures of like old you know nintendo games and and like apparently they're from like up towards cleveland because they always have 8-bit versions of people from the browns so <laughs> that part not a big fan of but i always try to send them off to chachi and uncle crappy um but uh I, I, but other than that like I, I mean i follow like you know wwe and sometimes there's interesting backstage photos is there anything in interesting you guys are, are are finding out there um, my sister follows the NFL mm -hmm. on Instagram, and she's she's not a football fan by any stretch of the imagination. But she says they just tweet out a lot of really cool, like, from the sidelines pictures. Like, it's kind of stuff you'd see on Inside the NFL, but in still frame form. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's not bad. It's a, it's a different look at the game. Like, like, you don't get just the typical... TV angles. It's kind of like what WWE does a little bit. It is. It is a lot like that. Uh, I don't know about the Go Hawks, Go Saints that they have going on here, but uh, I've also <laughs> noticed um, 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 WWE's been t tweeting the pictures from their app. 
because they always have these really great graphics, you know, uh, 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 you know, that go along with matches that are happening with stats or something like that. And they're, they're I think they're realizing, hey, not everybody's over on the sap. Let's 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 share them out. Um, so awesome. I, I, I just I just started following just two days ago, not even thinking about it for this po- for this podcast, but Pepsi on instagram i was just curious as to what bigger brands are doing at this point Mm -hmm. and i like this um similar to what disney did on vine as far as are you um you show your disney side uh pepsi's doing a are you fan enough and um, it's kind of interesting they put up very high quality pictures representing the brand but asking people to do the same and they're giving away awards for it Um, so I, i thought it was kind of interesting how people are using the brand you know it used to be that companies like pepsi are very protective of their brand however they're letting everybody express themselves in any way tastefully possible with instagram at this point so i thought it's kind of cool yeah i always thought that was an interesting fight like how do you make people really dig something it's like well it's soda do you really like are you but but i gotta think like 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 my sister like loves coca-cola everything you know especially around christmas because they always got the polar bears and the santa claus and the little glass bottles and everything um yeah and this is a great spin they're doing with football here it looks like which which you know that that makes sense it's something that you you take to the tailgate party right so Mm -hmm. awesome so, uh, is there anything else you guys have? I think we actually tap the uh, dock for a change here this week. So, is there anything <laughs> else? Uh, oh wait, you know, I had one more. I don't know. I don't know if uh, uh, you guys will be into this one, but uh, there was some commentary on uh, uh, Google Glass this week from uh, Glue Mobile. Last week we were talking about that Spellista game. I had a blast Thanksgiving uh, showing it off. Uh, you know, having my my grandfather and my and my cousins and everything play it. Uh, it, it was kind of fun watching everybody kind of stare off in space as they're trying to move that bubble over the letters. Um, but Glue Mobile, who, who developed it, uh, believes Google Glass is going to revolutionize the gaming landscape. Ladies and mm. gentlemen. <laughs> um, mm. I, I know, you know, Mike, of course, you've had some hands-on with it. John, I don't, I don't remember if, if you had a chance to look at it when, when we ran into each other before. No, no, I did not, no. Um, I mean, knowing what you guys uh, uh, do of this, do you think do you think this has the potential? It says, uh, for, for the quote, uh, he's saying that every five or ten years, uh, something more revolutionary than evolutionary comes along. Uh, he was talking to VentureBeat in this. Uh, and of course, there's an article from over on Polygon. Uh, it's been six or seven years since the first iPhone. This could be one of those moments. The next seven years could uh, well be a wearable wave. Uh, it could happen as fast or even faster than the smartphone, this PC in your pocket. So I could be it. I, it. It could be the space thing. It could be a watch, you know. Um, but but definitely, I think I think wearable tech is the next thing and well, figuring out how to do it. Gaming on watches is nothing new. No. No, I, I got a I got a uh, <laughs> Batman the movie um, watch game laying around here somewhere, right? Yeah, I mean Nintendo did that before the NES even came out. Like they, they were they're all in with the game and watch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah. I I don't know if gaming on the glass would be <laughs> the next thing. It could be the next Virtual Boy. Can see, I mean, I mean, couldn't you see? Because I mean, how many times have like, man, I'm stuck on this train and I'm, I'm holding on to this rail. I can't really pull out my phone to play Angry Birds or something because it kind of needs two hands or or the balance. But I could just sit here and, and move my head and play this word game. You know, everybody would think there's something wrong with me, but you know, that could that could be. Like, I I think it could be a different type of casual gaming. I also think, um, and Chachi, please remind me what the name of this is. Uh, I, I know I kicked with the invite when I, I didn't have Android for this um, um, uh, uh, augmented reality game um, that that you go around and you find portals and and you're actually you pick a side and and like it's an actual map of where you're at. We were down at Southside Works and there's like a portable over here and you can walk over there and it recharges or something. Um, you know I could see that or or <laughs> imagine this. There's the the iPhone game that or app that will tell you um there's zombies behind you when you go jogging (laughs) just imagine the ways you could apply that to google glass so um i don't know what do you think john uh 
you know, I, I just look forward to the I know how crazy it is when people are on those uh, Bluetooth phones and they're walking through the mall talking to somebody, but they look like they're crazy talking to themselves, right? You know, moving their hands, moving their head, moving their eyes. And I look forward to watching people with Google glasses playing, playing games. And uh, it's the whole world's going to look really crazy, but we'll be technology <laughs> crazy, I guess. You know, I do get that because sometimes like someone will be talking to me. It's like before a show and I'm checking the time and, and a lot of times, you know, I'll do the head nod or I do the tap. And like, like so one time I did that and somebody's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm checking the time to see how much time we have to do the <laughs> thing you were telling me. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, or, or I'll go, I'll go like look up at something and it's like, what, what's over there? You know, it's somebody's reacting to my, my head movement. I was like, no, I got a tweet, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of seeing where that's going to be uh, a little bit of an awkward moment, but. And especially if it's chat enabled, because anyone who's gamed on like Xbox live, you don't want to shout those things in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When they get call of duty on this thing, right? <laughs> Awesome. Um, well, hey, uh, like I said, we, we kind of tapped what we have in the dock here. Is there anything else you guys saw during the week you want to bring up? No, I'm good. You good? Awesome. No, I can't really think of anything. All right. Well, guys, thanks a lot. Mad Mike filling in here from the Wrestling Mayhem Show. He'll be joining us here later tonight. WrestlingMayhemShow.com from our East Coast uh, affiliate. He is representing the shirt. At Mad, <laughs> at Mad Mike 4883, of course, uh, talking to you all the wrestling and Doctor Who that you can handle. Yeah, and pretty much anything that, that like, geek-related. Yes. Uh, Johnny's at Yajagoff, yajagoff.com. Thanks for having me on, Mike. I might be, in the history of the show, I might be the least technology knowledgeable person on here but i appreciate you i appreciate you, you no, passing me through the background check i think we've had my father-in-law on before so okay. i don't know i have this as a phone <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> that's why i was wondering if you're going with that we were talking well, well not everybody's gonna have a smartphone on them i'm like oh wait no that's right you know this isn't gonna work for him is it you know so well maybe he always has his ipad in his pocket right that's true Awesome. So check them out. You jag off. Uh, Mad Mike, Wrestling Mayhem Show, of course. And check out everything here. Awesome cast on the Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, Google+. Plus. A lot of conversation happened there. Uh, let us know what you think about uh, these things. Let us know any stories you think we should talk about next week here on the show. And, of course, you can join us here uh, live in the chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.